Now, I've sort of said multiple times here that one of the biggest powers of BitLocker is also one of its biggest Achilles heel. And that is that if you should ever lose your keys, you're going to end up in a world of hurt because the whole point behind BitLocker is that there is no way to get back in that drive without the appropriate keys in hand. Well, Microsoft has a pair of ways that you can bring to bear in order to recover the keys, in order to get those keys back on the drive so that you can again unlock and make use of that encrypted drive. Those two ways, number one, involve the use of a recovery password, which is a long series of characters that you can punch in. Or number two involves the use of certificates. I'm going to show you the former of these two ways because it is the easiest one to perhaps understand based off of the limited experience that we have thus far with certificates. And it's also kind of interesting because as you go about entering in these key protectors, the, the recovery password protector, it's nice to be able to know that you have a second copy of this password, especially as you see how long this password can be, that sits up an Active Directory waiting for you should you accidentally have need to invoke a recovery on the drive. So let's start again with just taking a look at the drive that we have here. I'm back on RODC1. This is the machine that we've encrypted the entire C drive to protect it from being stolen from that quasi-secure location where it happens to sit. On this drive, I just want to verify that everything is complete by doing git bit locker volume, and then verifying that indeed, yep, we are fully encrypted here for the C drive. Now, for us to be able to make use of this password protector, we've got a couple of settings that we have to either configure in group policy or do so here using local policy. And I'm again going to use local policy so we just don't have to deal with the group policy engine because I just want to make it easy for you to recognize where these settings can exist. As you've already seen back in that last clip that in fact the settings are relatively well mirrored between local policy and group policy. So everything you see here is something you could potentially do back over in group policy once you begin to implement this in fully in production. So back here under BitLocker Drive Protection, we want to take a look at um, down here under Operating System Drives. The location we're looking for is choose how BitLocker operated, uh, BitLocker protected OS drives can be recovered. This is the location where we then simply configure a data recovery agent to be used for recovering a drive once it goes into recovery mode. Now there are a long, long, exceptionally long list of situations that can cause a drive to panic and effectively go into recovery mode. You go about unplugging it and plugging it in somewhere. You attempt to change characteristics on the drive. Microsoft actually has a very long, multiple page long list of the variety of ways that can cause that drive to panic and go into recovery mode. Anytime that happens, you'll need to use one of these two mechanisms, either a certificate or a password, this 48 digit recovery password, in order to tell the drive that everything is fine, go ahead and take yourself out of recovery mode, decrypt the drive, and allow that person to continue working with its contents. Here, as you see, we have configured the, the loosest of the settings that allow both the password and the recovery key, that allow also the configuration of the storage of that recovery information there into Active Directory. So we'll store the recovery password and the key packages up in Active Directory in a location where we can later get it if we need to, to get this drive out of panic in recovery mode. So with this configured, let's come back here to our location and let's do a GP update slash force just in case to ensure that this machine has all the appropriate policy on it so that we can then run the next command in our list of commands we need. That is the add bitlocker key protector, in this case for the C drive, and we'll be using the recovery password protector this time. So this recovery password is, again, a long series of digits that you'll punch in anytime this drive goes into panic mode. When you run this, when you first execute this, it will actually give you the password that you then need to write down. So ostensibly, once you've executed this and it gives you this nice yellow text up here, the numerical recovery password, it's your job then to write that number down and ensure it's kept in a safe location should you need it for one reason or another. Now the hard part here is that this is sort of laughable because that's a very long series of digits and even a single digit out of place will create the situation where you can't unlock that drive. So what we need to do is find a perhaps better way to store this information, perhaps in Active Directory. Now in order to back up this information, one of the ways we can do that is by running the backup bitlocker key protector command. Now the one thing I'll show you about this uh, backlop, backup bitlocker key protector command is it's a little strange in terms of the information that it requires. Because remember, this is the recovery password that we're interested in. However, if I run the help here, the key protector ID is in fact not that string. It's not actually the series of numbers that you need to punch in. It's in fact a GUID 
that's necessary for you to identify the actual key protector ID itself. So you can see here that there are a variety of ways to get that. Over here, you can kind of see the first little bit of that GUID that starts with the curly brackets and has quotes. And in fact, I think if I do that, I can scroll over and show you the very long GUID here. There it is. So it's actually that key protector ID that we need in order to punch it into the backup command so that we can get that backed up into Active Directory. So let's figure out a way in which we can actually get that. Let me clear the screen here. Let's do get bit locker volume first. Okay, there is the key protector, that recovery password key protector that we need. So let's do that now. Um, and then let's select the key protector column there. So we can see now, yep, those are the two key protectors. And in fact, if I use the select expand key protector, I can get indeed all the way down to the actual content that corresponds with that recovery password. So it's this little bit of extra PowerShell foo that allows us to get directly here to this location so that we can then mark this right here, there, copy it to the clipboard, and use that to populate the backup BitLocker key protector command, command here, against the C drive, and then the password itself, or the GUID itself. If everything goes correctly, that should complete the backup of that key protector, that long series of numbers all the way into Active Directory. Now flipping back over to our domain controller here, because I want to show you Active Directory users and computers here on this domain controller. But what I also want to show you is that on this machine here, I've added in the BitLocker tools, the, the, the administrative tools that we need in order to deal with BitLocker. And those are located um, here under Features and down here in the, in the Remote Server Administration Tools. Down here in the Feature Administration Tools are the BitLocker Drive Encryption Administration Utilities. You'll need to have these installed onto any machine where you intend to grab that password out of Active Directory, because without it, Active Directory users and computers does not have the necessary code to recognize what it's looking at. So with that installed here on this machine, let's come back here to Active Directory users and computers. And I want to show you just a couple of places where you could either search for or then go directly to the machine where you need that password. The first is right here. If I right click on the domain, I can choose to find a BitLocker recovery password. Now, in order to do that, I would have to have at least the first eight characters of the password ID. So that can be kind of hard to find. So instead, if you know which machine is having the problem, which one would guess that you would, it's perhaps a better idea for you to just simply view the properties of that machine here in Active Directory Users and Computers. So here's RODC1, and if I take a look at properties, you'll notice a new tab up here called BitLocker Recovery, which includes the password ID right here that is the exact same series of characters that corresponded with the GUID that we just dealt with a second ago. Down here then at the bottom is the password itself, which you would punch in to that machine at its boot screen when it required that recovery password to then decrypt the drive and allow the use or the access again to its contents. Now, short of forcing a drive into panic and forcing us to then have to reboot the machine and actually see the entry of that password, recognize that this is a screen that you would see anytime you boot up the machine after one of those really bad events have occurred, forcing the drive into recovery mode.